fantasy I want to share. I want to share. Yeah. I'll put you in my world. Rubbing on my ass and fingers in my head. So as I'm sitting here venting to you guys, I'm going to put my little uh, mask on. I got this from Sally's. It's the Freeman Feeling Beautiful Brightening Green Tea Orange Blossom Peel Off Gel Mask. I'm just going to be putting it on my face. Um, I was going to use my phalanges, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go get me a, uh, a mask spatula because this stuff is really sticky. Okay? So, uh, hold on one second. Okay, so... This video is just a vent video um, because this past week has been really trying for me, like for real. Um, I work in the hospitality industry, which could, I guess y'all could probably say, bitch, there's a whole lot of different facets of hospitality industry, so like... Where the fuck do you work? Um, I can't give you the exact name of where I work, but I work as a front desk associate um, at a hotel, okay? Um, I am normally the morning person, um, so I work like 7 to 3. Uh, that's my normal shift, 7 to 3. Guys, if I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the little, is it a viewfinder? I'm looking at my screen because I need to see what the fuck I'm doing. So, um, this past Friday, well, let me start here. So, when the pandemic started, a lot of, not a lot, but the travel, uh, industry took a real ooh, I think I got it on my hair the travel industry took a really big hit like a big hit and I'm sure a lot of people knows that um because nobody was fucking traveling <laughs> a lot of people lost their jobs who worked in the travel industry um those who did not lose their jobs their hours were cut really bad like, um, I was full-time, my hours were cut down, and I mean, I'm, I'm grateful I didn't lose my job, but my hours were cut down to two days a week. Luckily, I don't know what's going on, I think it's starting to peel. Luckily for me, my job is not the breadwinning job, my job is, um, more or less for travel purposes, uh, little bills that might pop up, maybe like a cell phone bill. You know, it helps here and there, but it's not the end all be all. My days had got cut down to two days a week. And I was still doing seven to three, but I mean, two days, like the fuck. Anyway, fast forward, <laughs> you know, just, you know, fast forward. Uh, now we're at the point where everything is opening up. They're opening up the earth and, well, the country, not really the earth because, like, everybody else is, like, shutting down because of the variant. But, um, fast forward to now, um, everybody and their mother, you know, everybody wants to make up for all that time that they lost, uh, in 2020 with the pandemic starting. Pandemic's not over. It's just that we have grown to live with uh, this, uh, you know, this the situation at hand. Now that everybody's coming back outside, um, you know, everything is crowded. Everything is sold out. Everything is hella expensive. Like, Rinky Dink Hotel that I, I don't mean, I'm not downplaying no hotel. I'm not going to do that. Well, but lower end hotels if you will would it be lower end no is it bargain hotels i forgot what the term is the proper term those hotels are actually selling 
at luxury prices. So like, I think I seen a choice hotel and I'm not saying they're a low end hotel, but you know, those are some cheap hotels to get. Um, I seen one of those and they were, and I mean this, it was in an area that wasn't even like, it was like in a dead middle of nowhere and it was damn near $450 a night, like for real. So, like, since everybody's coming back outside, you're getting crowds, and you're getting all of these different types of personalities. Now, I've been in customer service, whether it be food, slow food, because I worked at a supermarket, so let's say it's slow food. Um, whether it be uh, food, um, retail, and I, dip in, I dibbled and dabbed in hospitality um, about 10 years ago, and I, I came back about two and well now it's been two and a half years ago to hospitality but i've been in customer service okay different facets of customer service different positions in customer service for 18 years like yeah it's, it's going on 19 years 18 19 years that i've been in customer service so having to deal with all of those different personalities i'm used to it okay um i've built a tough skin i have dealt with the racism i have dealt with the karens i have dealt with the bonbon quee you know what i'm saying i have dealt with all of them the tims the billies the rashawns I, I look long story short i'm dealt with a lot of personalities all the personalities you could possibly think of i have dealt with okay um i've been cursed at cussed out um, just a lot hung up on, like, I've been all of that. So, you know, with everybody, everybody coming back and the different personalities, that really didn't affect me too much, okay? It really didn't. Um, when you're working for someone else, you're always going to hate your fucking job, no matter how you look at it. I don't care what nobody say. It's going to be something about your job that you're going to fucking hate. Okay, unless you're working for yourself, making your own rules, making your own money, seeing where you the money that you're working for is going back is being reinvested into you. You're just I don't see where you're always going to be happy <laughs> where you're going to. I don't see it. So this past week, I have really been well, at, let's just say like the end of July up until not the end of July, because the end of July was like last week. I want to say for the past like two and a half weeks, I've really been in my feelings about whether I should just venture off and start my own business um, within customer service because no matter how I try to stray away from customer service, I always find myself back in customer service. Um, so yeah, for the past couple of weeks, I've been like really in my thoughts about that, like really you know, just in my thoughts about maybe I should just do it, but uh, I'm scared. I'm scared of failure. I'm scared of <sighs> competing. Like, I think that's a major thing for me is competing and rejection and shit like that. I, I have my reasons why I have issues with that. Um, that stems from, like, childhood shit. But, um, yeah, you know, so that's, I've just been in my head. So, anyway, um, Friday, we had um, uh, a group come in because there was an event in the area. We had a larger group come in, and some, situa some things happened where some people were double-charged, some people, you know, did I get, here's my thing. I get that, and I, I'm saying this because when I go into the story, I don't want it to come off as if I'm being an asshole or it, as if I don't understand. I get everybody works hard for their money, okay? I work hard for my money. My husband works hard for his money. Everybody works hard for their fucking money. It's not like, you know, everybody's money is just handed to them. Like, everybody works hard for their money somehow. Um, so being double charged, I can understand being a little flustered, being irritated, like, bitch, what are you doing? I'm like out here and I just was double charged, however much money. I get that. One of the ladies, one of the ladies, a part of that group came up to the desk. Um, no, first, let me go here. A gentleman came up to the desk. He was the first one. A gentleman came up to the desk and um, he was checking in. I gave him my whole spiel. Uh, pretty much in within this spiel, um, I let you know about your charges. I let you know about your taxes. I let you know about incidentals 
because the hotel I work at, we charge, well, we hold incidentals, um, you know, just in case they decide to purchase food or purchase something from the little, oh, my nose is, it, oh, God, purchase something from the little store that we have, um, it'll come out of that money. I tell people, if you do not use that money, it goes back onto your credit card three to five business days after you check out, okay? And I stress business days after you check out. So um, I let him know about the amenities that we had. I let him know about the amenities that we did not have. Um, he was kind of in and out of paying me attention where, you know, he was listening to me, but then talking to other people, listening to me, talking to other people. All right, whatever. So his, could you get out the window? So his daughter comes up. She's about to check in. Um... And at this point, she's give, she's being very combative. Like, very combative. I was double charged. What are you going to do about it? First, let me start here, y'all. I am not a manager. Okay? Um, I can return certain payments. It's certain things that I can do. But there's systems and shit that I can't get into that, you know, some payments I cannot eradicate. So, you know, I told her, I said, ma'am, you know, um... I can try my best to see what's going on. Right now, it's not showing me anything. Maybe it didn't hit my sister, like, you know, hit me yet. She's like, what are you, What the hell do you mean it didn't hit you? And I'm sitting there looking like, I don't see it, ma'am. That, that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm, I don't see where you were double charged. So, she was like, well, how are you going to fix it? I mean, really combative. And I'm sitting, standing there, like, you know, trying to be as professional as possible. Like, ma'am, I don't know how I can fix something that I don't see. But, you know, I'll get with management um to take care of this for you she's like get your manager she's not here i know she'll be here tomorrow she's she's not here please understand guys that i get that if you're double charged and you're wondering where your hard earned money went you would be somewhat irritated but you have to understand and i'm saying this to all of the customers to all of the hotel guests to Anybody who's patronizing, is it patron? Anybody who's a patron to any any place, any establishment, okay? This is coming from all of us working in the customer service business. You have to be patient with us. You <laughs> work with us and we will work with you. When you come to us and you have your grievances but you're sitting there like, you know, I know it's not you, but this is what's going on. And I really want to get this taken care of. We would be more prone to going above and beyond. I mean, above and beyond the above and beyond that we would normally be prone to going. Because you came to us like you treated us like humans. As opposed to looking down on us as a bunch of fucking idiots like this job is the only job that we could get because we're not educated or because we couldn't get nothing else okay a lot of these jobs we choose to be at those jobs we don't have to be at those jobs it's not like those jobs oh this is it this is the end all be all but anyway she was being very combative um i said ma'am you know my manager will be in tomorrow morning i'm gonna have her take care of it um because at that time i, th I thought my manager had left uh had left for the day but um when I called to find out where she was for the other reason, she was still there. So, um, I mean, she was going in. She was just letting me have it. So, you know, I dealt with that. I ate that. I wasn't worried about it. It was whatever. So, you know, I'm going on, checking other people in, getting the thing to get, getting the desk together. Because at this time, it's like 3.15 and I'm supposed to be leaving, okay? Um, before we leave, we have to count our register, shut our system down, do a Passover, you know, different things like that. So here comes her dad. Keep in mind, he's the one that I checked in prior to her. And I mean, this man is six feet tall and he's banging on our hotel desk, on the front desk. So I'm like, sir, what's going on? What is going on? You fucking charged me for a fucking room that was already paid for. I said, sir, I didn't charge you anything. He was like, you took my fucking credit card and you did charge me. I said, sir. I didn't charge you anything. I held $51 for incidentals. You charged me for my room. First and foremost, let me start here. Where the fuck are you staying for three days and it only cost you $51? 
seriously, where, what hotel right now, since they opened up the earth, what hotel are you staying in for three days on a weekend, which weekends are more popular than during the week, okay? Where are you staying for $51 and I think it was 12 cents? Where are you staying? That's where I'm at in my head with it. But, you know, I guess not everybody has common sense. Common sense isn't so common. So, anyway, back to the story. He's going off. I mean, he's cursing at me and everything else. And I'm trying to explain to him, sir, I just held incidentals. You weren't even charged. To you, it might look like you were charged, but you weren't. It's pending. You weren't. I haven't charged you anything. I haven't finalized your uh, receipt yet. So, he's like, don't do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So, I'm standing there and I look at him and I'm like, are you threatening me? Keep in mind, I am five foot two. Okay, I'm a stocky five foot two, but I am five foot two, and this man had to have been like six feet, six foot one, whatever. He was six, he was six feet and over. Okay, hooping and hollering at me, threatening me, and I'm standing there like, are you really threatening me? Okay, so, um. Him, and, and I'm not even going to get on how the kid was disrespectful, too, because I'm just like, wow, this is just going on in this family. This family, this is what, these are the people that they have presented to the world. And the it's just going to, the, the traits are just going to keep on going because the little boy is an asshole, too. So he steps outside, and I'm standing there, and I look at the young lady that's supposed to be relieving me. Um... And I'm talking to her. She's like, well, you know, I really give it to you because I'm shaking because I would have went off on them. And I'm just like, girl, like, this is crazy. Like, they treat us as if this is the only job in the world. And I'm like, well, what are you threatening me with? Like, are you going to make it, make sure I don't work in Merlin again? Because I'm just like, well, bitch, I don't want to work. So you can sit here and make it so I don't work anywhere. But one thing you need to know about us black women are we are hustlers, honey. We make it out of no way. Like, for real, like, that's, we, we make it out of nothing. So you can sit here and threaten my job all day, but I don't give a fuck. Like, that's where we are with it. So he goes outside, and my manager, another black woman, <laughs> she's walking into the building, and I guess he felt that he, he was, oh, man, not to bring race into it, but, you know, that definitely played a part. Um, he starts apologizing to her. Never once did he say sorry to me for threatening me, but he apologizes to her. So she comes in, and at that point, I just broke down. I started screaming, like, y'all don't pay me enough for this. You guys do not pay me enough to come in here and be belittled, disrespected, threatened, and, and just, like, thrown on a chopping block to these people. <laughs> a lot of these places do not pay us enough for this. Um... So, as, you know, I'm I, at this time, I'm emotional. I've lost it. And he's walking through the door. And my manager's standing there looking at me, looking at him, looking at me. And I'm just like, you don't pay me enough for this. You don't pay me enough for this. And the crazy part is, is the guy, I guess, the, the main guy of the group works for our hotel but not like our uh our property but like our brand of hotel it's, it's crazy so after that i got in my car and the only thing and i'm on i'm on my way home the only thing i could ask uh uh you know just ask is like why do people have to be like that what is the what is the purpose of people acting like what do you what, what the fuck do you get from that you know what i'm saying um i tried to call corporate but it's nothing they could do, um, which leads me to believe that these hotel companies, um, and I'm talking about large hotel companies, I'm talking about small hotel companies, I'm talking about, and, and it's not just, um, just, I think it might be dry, just um, these companies, period, they don't really give a fuck about their associates, they're more concerned with the money that they're making they're more concerned about how many customers are coming in to fucking spend a dollar and i understand that you got to make money you know what i mean we ain't no charity case i get it but at the same time though like that could fuck up a good employee management could fuck up a good employee not being protected could mess up a really good employee you could have an amazing employee and simply because 
y'all didn't y'all act like y'all didn't give 17 fucks and stand up for us when these customers come in here these karens and these is they billies or whatever the fuck y'all fucking call them when they come in here like threatening us and causing bodily harm and just talking to us any kind of way you guys don't care you really don't care so um yeah, that, that solidified it for me. It's just like, damn, like, this this hotel chain, oh, it's the way. This hotel chain really does not give a fuck about us. It's all about the guests. Um, And how I knew that was the lady who came in being very combative and her dad put a guest assistance against me. <laughs> you were threatening me, but yet you called corporate on me. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> You call corporate on me, bitch? <laughs> Just like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. What? And they accepted that shit? They accepted that bullshit. Like, for real. They accepted that bullshit. You know, that all last week just woke me up. It just was like, you know what, Alicia? Just start your own shit. You've been thinking about it for a while. It's been going over and over in your head just start your own shit just do your own fucking thing you can stay in customer service and make your own policies policies that benefit the customer but also benefit your associates if it gets to that point okay where they will feel protected they will feel appreciated we don't feel appreciated in customer service we do not fucking feel appreciated you name one customer service associate that feels fucking appreciated for the bullshit that we deal with from you customers Name one fucking associate. Name one. I bet you can't. I bet you can't. They do not take us serious. Our fucking life at work, um, work to life balance is fucking off. We don't get paid diddly squat. Dead ass. We don't get paid a living wage for nothing. We have to deal with your dis disgusting attitudes when y'all come into these establishments because you had a bad day or somebody cut you off in traffic you feel the need to come in here and spit at us throw drinks at us talk to us all kinds of ways down us just because we're working here like this is the only job that we might have like we don't own businesses like you know we're just here like come on like this is just crazy to me and i know this is irritating some people um i mm. I didn't moisturize my face after I washed it because I'm, I'm putting the pudding on. Oh, give me a second. I'm sorry. It, the kids just keep interrupting me. But, you know, we, they sit here and, you know, since they opened up everything, like they're stressing um, about staff shortages and they keep going into, oh, the unemployed, the unemployed. Yo. There are no staffing shortages because of no fucking unemployed. Like, there's some unemployed people, but they can't fucking live off of that neither. Y'all think that fucking $600 a week is a living fucking wage? Like, the fucking unemployment, here in Maryland, you get an extra $300. So, if all they give you is $200 a week, the $300 take you five. You know, they might bring home $1,000 a week, but that you st What the fuck? You can't live off that. You want to know why? Because the cost of living in Maryland is horrible horrible a three bedroom two a three bedroom two bathroom house where i'm currently at is running almost eighteen hundred dollars a fucking month that's crazy that's crazy you have no basement in this neighborhood no basement in this neighborhood and a slither a slither of a fucking backyard okay a slither of backyard and <laughs> y'all think that us bringing in well not me because i'm not on unemployment which i never even received when my shit they, they was giving out partial unemployment here in merlin and i didn't even get that when my days were cut down to two days but um y'all think that a good 600 to fucking 800 a week is okay no no it's not fucking okay like the shit is wild joe i'm sorry y'all it feels wet. It's like it's still damp right here. I'm gonna stop touching it. I'm I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much. I don't want to irritate y'all though. Hold on, these kids is they they get on my nerve. Um, 
it's not no ooh, it's not no staffing shortages because of the unemployed. Now there's some unemployed people, but again, nobody's harping on unemployment when you're not bringing home that much fucking money, especially now. This is not the beginning of the fucking pandemic, okay? This is not the middle of the fucking pandemic. You know what I'm saying? We have learned to live with whatever this virus is going around, okay? We have learned to live with it. So, stop blaming it on the unemployed. No, you have us fucking customer service people. People that do the jobs that don't nobody else really want to fucking do. And we're learning, you know what? I can actually make my side hustle, my main hustle, and reinvest in me and my family. And still maintain an actual, like, healthy mental stability. <laughs> like, that's what that is. That's where y'all done fucked up. Y'all think, okay... That y'all businesses is the only thing that's maintaining people's lives. And it's not. People have to get side hustles. People have to get second jobs and shit. Okay? They have to. Just to live. Just to put food on the freaking table. But people are tired of y'all. People are tired of you disgusting customers. Some of you customers are gross. Now, I've had guests that are amazing. I mean, amazing. That make you want to give them the fucking world. And even when something's going wrong, they are still very patient and understanding to the process. And they're just... They're just so stinking nice till you just want to do everything you can to make it right. But then you have those ones, like the people that I described before, that are just horrible people. Like, you can just tell that they are just horrible people. It's it's no way. I feel sorry for their neighbors. Like, it's, it's just that bad. I feel sorry for their neighbors. I feel sorry for their son's teacher. I feel sorry for they got there going, uh, 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 bank tellers. I feel sorry for anybody that they come in contact with because they were horrible people. But yeah, I honestly, because at this point I'm rambling on, but I told y'all it was a vent video, okay? I told you that. I said that. I said I'm going to be venting in this video. And I did. I got it off my chest. But, um, but yeah, y'all, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Customer service is just not what it used to be. It's not. And, and I, I read this comment earlier today. I read this comment earlier today where um, they said whoever whoever came up with the saying that the customer is always right, um, you need to be flagged. And that's the truth. That's, that is the freaking truth. The customer is not always right. Some of you people are fucking horrible. Now, I'm not saying that as an, as a customer service rep, customer service uh, associate that all of us, like, you know, we're out of the woods. Like, we're, we're just perfect little angels. Like, no, that's not what I'm saying, because I've come in contact with some uh, customer service reps that are just trash. Like, I mean, horrible. Attitude is on gross, you know what I'm saying? But, a lot of times... The customer will make, customers and management will make an employee just be like, you know what, what the freak am I trying for? Seriously, what the fuck am I trying for? Like, what is this doing for me? I can't even see my families. On, and, and the hotel industry really sucks because, like, they don't take into account holidays and shit. So it's just like, you don't see... You don't see your family on Christmas because they're open. Um, and, and even with like flight attendants and shit, you don't, you don't see your family. You don't see your, your, uh, you can't spend time with your kids and shit. Ooh, girl, like your skin is bright. Hey, boo, hey, boo. Ooh, that really, uh, did a number. That's still wet, though. Um, yeah, you know, just, I don't know, I don't know, it just, it sucks, it really freaking sucks, I'm dead ass, it, it's to the point where I'm just like, I, um, I definitely want to get my business started, that way I'm my own boss, my skin feels super soft, I still got a little sticky right here. Little blue. 
I'm gonna have to rinse my face off. But it looks like it, uh, ooh, girl. It looks like it definitely, definitely did its thing. It definitely brightened my face up. Got all the little dull skin off. My skin, my skin, my skin. <laughs> my lips is fucking ashy. If y'all still see some stuff on here, please don't judge me. You, you sat here and saw me, like, peeled it off. I gotta go rinse my face off. But my skin has come a long way since last year. Like, dead ass since last year. Anyway, I want to thank y'all for listening to me. Um, Again, I'm not opening my door. Uh, this is what I used. Stop it! Stop! This is what I used to stop as a peel. Really nice. Really nice. I got nervous because there is some fragrance in it. So if you go buy, please keep that in mind. But I guess, and it smells really good, but it, it didn't do too much. It didn't affect my skin too much. But, um, it, uh, it got the little dead skins off it, you know. It's in my baby hairs. <laughs> it's in my baby hairs. I gotta go wash my fucking face before I rip my baby hairs. I won't handle edges because of a peel in my mask. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for sitting here and listening to me vent. Um, Like I said, I'm going to go and I will eventually do a video on my sea moss and my rose petals. Um... If it's anything in particular that you guys are interested in or you have any suggestion or constructive criticism, because I am a learner, I enjoy learning, um, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, my Instagram is in the description box. I don't really write detailed descriptions in those description boxes. I just put my Instagram and my Facebook in those description boxes and the music um my intro music is actually my sister her name is cassandra shade make sure you guys check her out um i, I tag her you i tagged her youtube in the description box or i will okay um so yeah i want to thank you guys for listening to me thank you guys for not being judgmental because you know this is a judgment free zone um yeah i guess that's all i got it's been real guys bye